Okay. Chapter 48. The 12 tribes of Israel returned to Judah. Those are the tribes that were allotted lands in the promised land by Moses and Joshua. Um, the priestly tribe, the Levites, were not given a land, but there's actually 13 tribes, and they all returned. Ezra makes that clear. The book of Ezra. Now, this book, is Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord. All of my videos are coming from chapters of either this book, all of this book, and the chapters of the second book he dictated to me, as he dictated the Torah to Moses, um, the life of God's righteous servant, Moshe, to, to, to show how I fit the verses of Isaiah 53. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not everything in my life. It, it's really just all the bad things. <laughs> Suffering, injuries, cancer, exposed to death. Okay, this is pretty long, so I'm going to get started on it. Oh, in addition, uh, God also dictated, commanded, and directed each of the prophets of the Book of the Prophets to write their books. Everything in the Hebrew Bible came directly from God. He had men write it one way or another. Certainly the prophets did, wrote their own books. But uh, probably what would have helped with the writings, Ezra, Nehemiah, um, Chronicles 1, Chronicles 2, everything in there. Really, I, I had a, a lot more explanation of what's important about knowing this book in these videos in uh, chapter 47, the one before this, especially the part two, because it was real short, and so I, 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 I talked a lot more about what, what you find in this book and, and what a man of divine beings is and how they're just all over the Hebrew Bible, Moses. David, Elijah, uh, all the prophets, many of the divine beings. Now you can find out what that's about. This is Isaiah 43, verses 5 and 6. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your folk from the east. I will gather you out of the west. I will say to the north, give back. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, my daughters from the end of the earth. This would have been for the exiles as much as anything. This is Isaiah 43, verse 1. But now thus says the Lord, Who created you, O Jacob? Who formed you, O Israel? Fear not, for I will redeem you. I have singled you out by name. You are mine. Well, exiles were certainly redeemed. He anointed a Gentile, Cyrus of Persia, to become king of all the nations. <laughs> king of all the nations. And uh, he issued from... Persia had defeated Babylon, who had defeated Assyria and the Chaldeans. Uh, but it was, it was Cyrus who issued a proclamation that all of uh, the exiles could return to Jerusalem to build God's house, the second temple. And they did. It's free passage. I'm about to do, uh, this is Isaiah 43, verse 19. And it, this is sin forgiveness for the exiles. The uh, sin forgiveness of Jeremiah 31 is for the Roman dispersal, the diaspora, away from the promised land, or away from your country. That's Hebrew Bible, so it's away from the promised land. I'm about to do something new. Even now it shall come to pass. Suddenly ye shall perceive it. I will make a road through the wilderness and rivers in the desert. 
the road was that proclamation. Y'all are free to go. <laughs> That's what he did. It is, this is Isaiah 43, verse 25. It is I who, for my own sake, wipe your transgressions away and remember your sins no more. They became a holy seed and built the second temple. That was for him. <laughs> he didn't deserve it. He's probably going to say the same thing about the third temples. They're going to tell him what else he'll have me write one day. Once this gets accepted by a great many, a multitude of people, I make the many righteous, and as uh, my portion, I receive the many. That would be the many made righteous who follow me, heed me, listen to my words, promote me. And as my spoil, I receive the multitude. So the many grow. I don't know how long it's going to take. He's been with me 16 years in there. Preparing me. Keep telling him. Let me out of this fire refinement. Stop hurting me. It's emotionally and physically. Sleep deprivation. I found out I can stay up four straight nights. <laughs> you become like a zombie. And he starts hurting you and doing mean things to you. To break your will. Temper your emotions. Calm your anger. Because that's why you can't even get angry anymore. You just... <laughs> you just you just take the pain and just try not to talk. This is 1 Chronicles 5 through 26. This, this, this chapter is actually in three parts. This is a, the first section. So the God of Israel rouses the spirit of King Pul of Assyria. The spirit of King Tilgath Pilsner of Assyria and he carried them away. Namely, we got two kings of Assyria, Pool and Tilagar. Just keep reading, he said. <laughs> and he carried them away. Namely, the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, and brought them to Hala, Habor, Hara, and the river Gozan. To this day, those are the tribes that uh, did they? That wasn't. They didn't live in the Promised Land. They lived east of the River Jordan, adjacent to it. Apparently, there was some nice land right across from the Promised Land. Uh, and, and they got to see it and take it off. Now the northern kingdom is going to get, this is what I'm about to read, uh, defeated and deported with uh, Gentiles imported to the northern kingdom. And eventually Judah is defeated by Babylon. Assyria defeated the northern kingdom and the, the tribes I just mentioned. In the days of the King Pekah of Israel, King Telegath Pilaser of Assyria, oh, Oh, no, 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 that's a different one. Came and captured Ajan, Abel, Beth, Maka, Jonah, Kedeser, Hazor, Gilead, Galilee, the entire region of Naphtali, and deported all the inhabitants to Assyria. That's 2 Kings, chapter 15, verse 29. In the ninth year of Hoshi, the king of Assyria captured Samaria. That's the northern kingdom. It's sometimes called the, uh, Samaria, sometimes Ephraim, and sometimes Israel. He deported the Israelites to Assyria and settled them in Hala, at the river Havor and the river Gazan, and in the towns of Medea. The king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kuta, Ava, Hamath, Sepharaphim, and he settled them in the towns of Samaria in place of the Israelites. They took possession of Samaria and dwelt in its towns. 2 Kings chapter 25 verse 1. The king of Babylon had them struck down and put to death at 
Ribba, in the region of Hamath. First Judah was exiled from its land. 2 Chronicles, chapter 36, verse 2. Thus said King Cyrus of Persia, The Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has charged me with building him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Uh, Jerusalem is actually in the lands of Benjamin, but all the kings rule from uh, all the kings of Judah rule from Jerusalem. So Benjamin's lands are considered part of Judah. Any one of you of all his people, all you thirteen tribes. It doesn't say this. The view of all his people. The Lord his God be with him and let him go up. Go to Jerusalem and build the second temple. 1 Chronicles chapter 9 verses 2 and 3. The first to settle in their towns on their property were Israelites, priests, Levites, and temple servants. While some of the Judeites, some of the Benjamites, and some of the Ephraimites and the Nesliites settled in Jerusalem. Well, they weren't lost, were they? Ephraim and Manasseh. And Ephraim makes it even more clear. Uh, oh, part two from the book of Ezra <laughs> and Nehemiah. The following verses were written by men who were eyewitnesses of the return of all the tribes of Israel under the declaration of Cyrus of Persia, whom a God anointed to clear the way for them to build the second temple. They testify that all 12 tribes and the tribe of the Levites returned to the lands of Judah and the lands of Benjamin, the lands of the kingdom of Samaria, the northern kingdom, sometimes called Ephraim and sometimes called Israel, were inhabited by Gentiles. Ezra, chapter 3, verse 1. When in the seventh month arrived, when the seventh month arrived, the Israelites being settled in their towns, the entire people assembled as one man in Jerusalem. There it is. That's the definition of the Jewish people being called Israel. They have to gather as one man. All of them. It's only happened twice. At Oreb, when God had Moses get all of the Israelites together and they gathered as one man. And to a man agreed to be his people and to listen and to obey and abide by his laws, commandments, and directions they received from Moses. Ezra chapter 2 verse 70. The priest, the Levites, and some of the people and the singers, gatekeepers, and the temple servants took up residence in their towns and all Israel in their towns. Well, the people from the northern Canaan couldn't go back there. They were inhabited by Gentiles. So they came into Judah, which had been vacated during the exile, and you know the people who had lived there uh, it was some 70 years. We're no longer alive, I guess, for the most part. And uh, they just had to establish new residences, new towns uh, for the exiles. Everybody living in the southern kingdom. Nehemiah, verse 12, verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 47. And in the time of Zerubbabel, and in the time of Nehemiah, all Israel, there it is again, contributed the daily portions of the singers and the gatekeepers, and made contribution for the Levites. And the Levites made sacred contributions for the Aaronites. I guess that's the clan of Aaron. Ezra, verse 8, uh, again, chapter 8, verse 25. 
and I weighed out to them the silver, the gold, and the vessels, the contribution to the house of our God, which the king, his counselors, and officers, and all Israel, who were present, had made. Ezra, chapter 8, verse 29. You want to God says the reason we got so many of these verses out is because of the teaching that the Ten Law strikes. How could you possibly read Ezra and Nehemiah and come up with that and believe it's true and teach it? It's why they've been reckoned with and dismissed. There's more on that in chapter 47. And well, it, there's a whole chapter called uh, di, um, Reckoning and Dismissal. It's in the book and of course it's on video. Ezra 8, chapter 29. Guard them diligently until such time as you weigh them out in the presence of the officers of the priests and the Levites and the officers of the clans of Israel in Jerusalem in the chambers of the house of the Lord. Ezra chapter 9 verse 1 When this was over the officers approached me saying this would have been Ezra the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites had not separated themselves from the peoples of the land whose abhorrent practices are those are like those of the Canaanites the Hittites the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Ezra, chapter 10, verse 5. So Ezra at once put the officers of the priests and Levites and all Israel under oath to act accordingly, and they took the oath. Nehemiah, verse one, uh, chapter 1. He controls my thoughts and my words. And he's the one actually doing that. And it's because he wanted me to tell you that, I guess. He's mysterious, my friends. He's got a lot of personality. He can be quite humorous, you know, when he's not tearing me to pieces in the fire refinement, which is pretty rare, actually. Kind of having a, I had a good night. The, the day started out, you know, I mean, I know he's here. <laughs> Believe me, his power is around me. My teeth, my, both my feet are numb and tangling. I can feel pressure on my shoulders and my knees. I can hardly get out of this chair. And he thinks that's so funny. He just, he does. I can see. I just know he's laughing. It's not to my ear. Let your ear, <laughs> I just said ear. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to receive the prayer of your servant that I am praying to you now, day and night, on behalf of the Israelites, your servants. He doesn't call them righteous servants, by the way. They're always a uh, servant. Which is funny, too, because Jesus for Judaism says all the Jewish people gathered as one man, Israel, um, or the servant in his commentary. But he's saying to the righteous servant of Isaiah 53, but he never uses that phrase. I don't know. It's peculiar. Day and night on behalf of the Israelite, your servants, confessing the sins that we Israelites have committed against you, sins that I and my father's house have committed. Chapter 2, verse 10. <clears throat> when Sambalot the Heronite and Tobiah the Ammonite servant heard, it displeased him greatly that someone had come intent on improving the condition of the Israelites. There would be people from the northern kingdom, Gentiles. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 17. 
the whole community that returned from the captivity made booths and dwell in the booths. The Israelites had not done so from the days of Joshua, son of Nun, to that day. And they were there was very great rejoicing. Right, part of the high, high holidays. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. On the 24th day of this month, the Israelites assembled, fasting in sackcloth and with earth upon them. Those of the stock of Israel separated themselves from all foreigners and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur beginning. Nehemiah chapter 11 verses 3 and 4. These are the heads of the province who lived in Jerusalem in the countryside of Judah. The people lived in their towns, each on his own property. Israelites, priests, Levites, temple servants, and the sons of Solomon's servants. While in Jerusalem, some of the Judahites and some of the Benjamites lived. Okay, it's part three, last part. The tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and the northern kingdom of Samaria were deported northwest of Babylon, that would have been Iraq, and to the towns of Medea, that would have been Iran, and the kingdom of Judah was deported to Babylon. Again, that's Iraq. Jerusalem is when within the lands of Benjamin, which lands are considered part of the kingdom of Judah, since that is where the kings of Judah rule from. I'm telling him while I'm reading that, I've already said this. And he said it's good for him to hear it twice. Okay, that's what you say to God. He'll say, Key. I said, What? Go do this, go do that. Or listen, turn the TV up. And I'll say, okay. Because that's what you do with God. That's what you say all the time. Okay. He doesn't always. Actually, he rarely addresses me by name. If he says something, I know it's from me. Which lands are considered part of the kingdom of Judah, since that is where the kings of Judah rule from? That is why there is an emphasis on the Judeans and Benjamites in the accounts of the return of the twelve tribes of Israel to the lands of Judah and Benjamin. Basically, what, what, what you see in Ezra and uh, I assume Nehemiah, Ezra, has got Manasseh and Ephraim, uh, those are the largest tribes. He just didn't mention all the tribes, the smaller tribes. Now, Benjamin, okay, Judah, Ephraim, and Manasseh. Manasseh was so big they had to cut it in half. They just had a tribe of Manasseh. They, they're the ones that lived east of the River Jordan, and the other half lived in the Promised Land. Um, and Benjamin is mentioned also for this very reason. That that's 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 where the the temple is and the the king's rule from the lands in, in, of, of Benjamin. Uh, he's mentioned, but that and Benjamin was the smallest tribe. I, I just keep thinking this is where this lo ten tribes aren't in here came from. I, I don't know how you can read it that one, as you can too. What is this? Is? No. I, did, did the page move? No. When the seventh month arrived, the Israelites being settled in their towns, the entire people assembled as one man in Jerusalem. When the people Israel gather as one man, it is all twelve tribes and the Levites. The priestly tribe without an allotment of the promised land. 
Judah the Heights and Benjamites alone are not Israel. Though all reference to Israelites would include them. The first to settle in their towns on their property were Israelites, priests, Levites, and temple servants. While some of the Judeites and some of the Benjamites, some of the Ephraimites, and some of the Manessahites settled in Jerusalem. Ephraim and Manasseh were not lost tribes, as many believe and many rabbis teach from writings outside of the Hebrew Bible. I would suspect the Talmud <laughs> or something from Rambam. It is said in writings by sages and rabbis that ten of the twelve tribes of Israel became lost and did not return to Jews to build a second temple. There never were lost tribes according to the Hebrew Bible and God. These are the words of God. This is God's chapter. Every bit of it. He taught it to me and he said, Keith, go to your computer. Type this. Twelve tribes of Israel returned to it. <laughs> All twelve tribes returned. And go 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 to your Tanakh. You can find the the translation of it is it was on the internet. I can't find it, man. And put all these verses in. You know, copy, paste, put them on my notepad. Command it and direct it. Do these things. We're going to put them on to a, a, a new blog. We got up to like 117 blogs. And then we turned those 117 into a book of 50 chapters. And we were doing that a long time ago. If there were lost tribes, then Isaiah wrote a prophecy of God that was false and was not fulfilled. Isaiah 43, verses 5 and 6. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring you folk from the east. I will gather you out of the west. I will say to the north, give back. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Isaiah's prophecy is to all Assyrian Babylon exiles returning by the words of God. The return of the exiles to the land of Israel, given to Abraham, Isaac, and given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by covenant, and partitioned among the twelve tribes of Israel by Moses and Joshua, is not just the Babylon exiles of Judah and Benjamin. It includes all the tribes that were defeated, deported, and exiled by the Assyrians before them. The Babylon exiles were the last to be deported to the vast lands of Babylonia, which was once Assyria, where all the exiles were, and by this time scattered far and wide throughout Babylonia along many different rivers. The Babylon exiles are all 13 tribes in Assyria, Babylonia. What they ought to be called is the Assyria, Babylon, Persian exiles. Next chapter, chapter 49, there's only 50, so we're getting there. I'm getting there. The final prophet of God. This is God taking a shot at Muhammad. I told it. I said, they're going to say I blasphemy him. They, they claim he's the last prophet of God and messenger. It's etched on their mosque in stone. And I, it turns out, in the last prophet of God, as far as the Hebrew script, the Hebrew Bible's concerned. And we tell them in this next book, this next chapter. I said, they're going to declare a jihad against me. And that's where, if you see this man who has blasphemed Muhammad, kill him. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. I don't worry about it. The angel goes before me and God's got my backside. <clears throat> and he needs me. I'm his representation. His prophet like Moses. That doesn't mean he can't hurt me an awful lot. Because <laughs> he does. There's plenty of videos explaining that in greater detail. It's horrifying is what it is. Thanks for watching.